Okay, we've got one here from Darren Monk. How long do you let the pike run with your bait? I was pike fishing last weekend and I banked five fish, but lost three. Uh, he thinks due to striking too early. Also, what size hooks do you use? Um, it's a really, really good question. Firstly, Darren, well done on a landing five. That's five more than we've caught so far today. So uh, that's a result in itself. Um, okay. Generally, when the drop-off indicator goes, or I see an indication on the float, I'll generally go over to the rod, pretty much wind down straight away and strike. There's no need to delay the time between you seeing an indication and you striking. If you're using a normal size bait, then the bait should be inside the pike's mouth immediately. immediately. Um, so obviously delaying it will only result in a deep hooked fish. If you're doing that and you miss three, four, five in a row, then it might be worth thinking, maybe I'll just leave it an extra three, four seconds and then wind down. I wouldn't recommend waiting any longer than that, ideally striking as soon as you get an indication. With regard to size of hooks, it's about matching the size of the hook to the bait, the same as you would in any other area of course fishing. Now, I don't tend to use small trebles such as a 10 or an 8 because I think they're easily masked by such a big bait. So I tend to use a 6 uh, with a medium size bait to give an indication of uh, what I'd call a medium size bait. So we've got a, a half mackerel that we were using earlier there, all its guts hanging out unfortunately, but size 6s would be perfect with a, a bait like that which I'd consider probably an average size pike bait. If we go a bit bigger, things like a large sardine, a herring, or a whole mackerel, I then go up to a four. Um, there's no need to use any smaller hooks than that um, in pike fishing. And like I said, semi-barbless is definitely the way to go. You'll find it a lot easier to, uh, to unhook the pike when you catch them. Uh, so I hope, hope that one helps. Just uh, I think for everyone, you don't need to delay the strike. Um, if you do miss them, most of the case, it's very small pike picking the bait up. They can't deal with the size of the bait. Um, so it's not those that we're generally after anyway. So I wouldn't worry about that one too much. Got one here from Michael Van Egmond and he's brand new to predator fishing and he's looking to get a spinning rod. He's not sure what to go for and doesn't understand the casting ratings on the rods. Um, We've got a new range at the moment, the Ultron range, and they're all rated in casting weights. And for those of you that maybe come from a carp fishing background and are used to the rod being uh, quoted in a test curve, it can be quite confusing. I'll give an example. Um, if you've got a rod that has a 20 to 50 gram casting rating, that means that it's suitable for lures between 20 and 50 gram, say plus or minus 10%. So it gives an indication of what you'd be expecting to use um, in terms of casting. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't give any indication of uh, sort of test curve or anything else like that. So for day-to-day -day fishing for pike, as I mentioned, a 20 to 50 gram rod, that would be a good all-rounder. An 8 foot Ultron medium lures, 20 to 50 would be ideal for spinners, spoons, the sort of typical lures that most people use. When we move up to slightly bigger lures, such as the 7 inch replicants or 9 inch replicants, you may want something with a 50 to 100 gram casting rating. That would be what I'd recommend for pike fishing. If it's mostly zander and perch that you're fishing for, you may well want to look at a rod with a casting rating, maybe of between 15 and 20 grams, um, which would be more in keeping with the smaller lures that you'll be using and the smaller fish that you'd be expecting to catch. Okay, so we've got one here from Jack Reed, and this is another really topical question at the moment. He's asked about chinning pike. Um, the practice of chinning a pike, what that basically means is when you've got a fish to the bank, the pike has uh, a mouth structure that allows you to lift them out under the gill cover. It's like almost like a built-in handle for the pike, makes them easy to handle in that respect. There's a lot of uh, debate at the moment about whether lifting a pike vertically in this manner, whether it be from the water or for a photograph or during unhooking, whether that actually causes them any damage. Now it's a practice that's been quite widely used for a long time. Um, and it's never been directly linked to the death or demise of, uh, of any numbers of pike. However, um, I've recently tended to move away from handling them in that manner where possible. The internal organs of many fish aren't that well fixed to the inside of them, so they can move about inside. And obviously the stress that's placed upon the, the internal organs when you're holding a fish vertically is very different to when it's normally being supported by the water. 
um, so this could potentially cause damage. For this reason, although I still hold them under the gills when they're on the floor and I'm unhooking them, when, I tend to, when I'm lifting them for a pitcher, I now tend to hold them horizontally with a good firm grip just behind the gills, but again, remembering that those internal organs are there, so not gripping too hard. Um, I think that's the, the best way to handle them. Always remember as well, if you're pike fishing anywhere with sort of steep banks or anything else like that, always carry them up down or up from the water, either in a landing net or a waist sling, not just carrying them because if they do flap, you're likely to drop them and obviously that could cause some serious damage to them. Great question there, by the way, Jack. Okay, we've got a, a question here from Tim, final question. What's the best way to set up a float rig with dead baits? He said he's fishing a very big lake with depths to around 25 feet. Now, if you're fishing a big lake for the first time and you want to cover the water, a great rig to use is drifter float. All you need to do is uh, get onto the bank or from the boat so you've got the water going over your shoulder across the lake, get one of these ready-made drifter floats, um, set it to maybe two-thirds depth as a starting point, a uh, egg sinker down the line and a ready-made trace and either a dead or a live bait depending upon the rules and using the vane that's already mounted on the float here the wind will catch that and take it across the surface of the water and this can be a great way to track predators down. Use braided line with no stretch because these will drift 100, 150, even 200 meters um, and obviously at that range you need the braided hook to pull the hooks, uh, the braided line to pull the hooks home. So a great way of exploring water and using a sliding stop knot you can set that at 10, 15, 20 feet, whatever you need to obviously uh, to cover the water. But try different depths and just because the water's deep doesn't always mean that the pike will be on the bottom. Pikes spend a lot of time higher up in the water column chasing prey fish, which is well worth remembering whichever method that you're using.